all the entities from your applications do get created in an standard MS SQL or Oracle database behind the scenes. Awesome's platform does come with it. But what if you have a requirement where you need to integrate our systems with an external MS SQL database? In this video, let me show you how. So this is my service studio. I have just built this reactive web app. Uh, what I meant earlier on is if you create any entities and the database in data tab, for example, an entity for order that could have things like order date and maybe an address. These entities, when you publish the application, get created in a native database that comes with the platform. It could be the MS SQL or Oracle database, depending on what you choose when you sign up as an enterprise customer. That may also happen is that you may need to integrate this application with a national database. In this case, it could be MS SQL. So imagine this order entity that I have here. Maybe it's in my application, but to access the customer information, which could be coming in from CRM that uses MS SQL, that's the kind of scenario we have. So those customers have to be seen here to place the orders. How do we do that? So first of all, we have to create a connection string to connect to the database. How do we do that is by reaching out to service center. If you click on this cogwheel icon, it brings you to service center. Of course, you can also remember the URL and always you know, make it a favorite and reach there. Once in service center, you need to go to the administration. Under administration, there is a tab for database connections. Here, we'll create a new database connection. So make sure you have the details of that database that you want to connect with. In my case, I'm going to call it maybe external SQL. Uh, you have a choice of connecting to multiple databases. I'm going to connect with SQL Server. Basic configuration is good to go in my case. Your account, password, uh, server, that's the one, and Northwind. Thereafter, you test the connection. It's successful as you can see here, and we can go ahead to create the database connections, which also has been created here. Now, this is the admin configuring the database connection. We're not done yet. So for next step, I need to copy this URL. That's the URL of my environment copy this and then I need to access integration studio uh, this would already be there on your laptop in case you have service studio this is similar to service studio but mainly used for integrations so I'm going to access integration studio by clicking on that icon let's close the welcome screen and then I'll paste the URL of the environment if this is the first time you're accessing integration studio then you may have to set a few more configurations there but in my case, let me go ahead by providing my password. Oops, wrong password. I it goes through. And we're in. Once you're in, in Integration Studio, you can create extensions. Extensions can be something that you want to use for writing down your own code or like in this case, to connect with external tables from those database connections we created earlier on. So I'm going to call it uh, maybe extension for CRM. You know, you can give any name to these extensions. The goal there is to, uh, uh, you know, make them such that your developers can, you know, uh, understand what they are for. So it helps with the discoverability basically. So I'm calling it extension CRM because my purpose is to, you know, uh, expose customer side of tables to from this extension. Uh, thereafter, we'll go to entities. If you right click, you have an option to connect to external table. Click on it. And then this wizard comes in, which if you follow next, it will start showing you, first of all, your uh, database connection. This was the one we created or admin created in the service center. We can use it to go further. This was the database. We go in. And then the platform, the integration studio, goes into the database and finds out all the tables there. Let's say we pick up customer and maybe customers and supplier by city. Okay, so these, uh, just for the sake of this scenario, imagine this comprises of my CRM use case, okay? Likewise, I can create multiple other extensions for employees, for orders, for product, and, you know, can give a logical grouping to this. Once done, I can go to the next stage. So logical database, I can give it a name, external CRM SQL, so that I can refer to it. And then I'm almost done. Now, we just created the extension. We have not published it to our environment. That's an important step. So in Integration Studio, we also have one click publish. Click on it. And then it takes care of the compilation, upload, and publishing of the extension to your environment whose URL you keyed in in the beginning. Takes a few seconds. It also allows you to save the extension for offline use in case 
you're not immediately connected to the internet, but if you are, it goes through and publishes the extension there. Now note here that even though the, publish, the extension has been published, uh, there's a configuration step that we have to go through. Now, if you put in a real scenario of a development team or IT team, the admins have created database connection, the team lead or someone of that sort created the extension to create these logical grouping or maybe an architect, but then they have to be associated, right? The extension with the database connection. That's the configuration that is missing and is expected. We can configure this by clicking on this button, configure, and brings us immediately to the page where we can do the send of mapping. So our extension CRM here is allowed to use external SQL database connection. So this is as part of governance that nobody should be able to use this database connection without the knowledge of the admin. So once we do apply, we are good to go and the extension has been allowed permissions to access the database connection. Thereafter, uh, myself, I'm going into the developer shoes again. To integrate with those tables from extension, I can click on manage dependencies. That's the feature that allows us to reuse several things. And I can look for my CRM. Okay, so that's the extension I just published. And it has those two tables. Now, as a developer, I don't need to know where these tables are coming from. Maybe my team lead has given me instructions that uh, you should use CRM tables for you know getting the customer information. And that's the instruction I have in mind. So I'm adding a reference and clicking apply. Once added, you will notice these tables appear under the extension name, under same data and database table. But these are not coming from my database, just like order. These are external database tables. If you expand these, you will see that they appear just like any other entity in our systems. Even they have their own CRUD operations, which can be used uh, as they need be. The difference is I'm not able to modify this table because these are not my table. These are coming from external sources, right? So I cannot do that. But beyond that, if I want to maybe create uh, those listing real screen, it works pretty much the same way. I can drag them onto the main flow editor here and the platform can build me the create, read, update, delete kind of functions like the customer listing page. All the data is coming from the entities from external database and the detail page as well. So if I open this, the form is here as well as the save logic is using the CRUD operations coming from the uh, entity. Okay, so everything is good. Uh, now for the next part, uh, if I go back to my initial use case where the order has to be placed by the customers coming from ex external CRM. In that case, we can set up a relationship between these two tables. So order and customers. Customers will place orders. You will notice the customer table is grayed out, which again uh, is for the same point that I cannot modify this table, but I can use the reference from here in my own order table to create a relationship. Thereafter, if I go back, maybe I want to add orders uh, for the customers. I can maybe add a button on the same screen. Maybe somewhere here, add order. And then if I double click, I can react the user to a new screen. This will be for new order. And the new order screen, we can modify to have a form. So the form goes here. Under the form, I'm going to place the order entity. It builds my order form. Notice how the customer dropdown is being appearing here uh, as being populated also by the necessary queries because we have associated these two tables together. So in the end, when somebody clicks on save, what I need to do is from the order, I can drag and drop this uh, option, this, and then I can pass the value of the uh, current order from the form. And then maybe I can react back the user to the listing page. And that's it. Let's go ahead and publish this to see the outcome. So there are two things that I did here. First of all is uh, creating the database connection, then creating the extension using integration studio. And then thereafter, we also allow the configurations to for the both sides to use each other. And thereafter, we uh, created the relationship, the association by creating a reference here. And also we build the database modeling by doing the integrations with or the relationship building with these tables. And then I build the screen. So if I launch it now, I can see my customer list. All these data that you see here is coming from external data source. Uh, it works pretty much the same way. If you click on this search the details and just to show you it works, let's say it was S there and see it works. And then uh, for the other screen where I pre prepared for creating an order, if I add an order, you can see all the orders are, I mean, customer names are populated here. Somebody, if they want to place an order, they can just maybe put in here. And 
copy an address and save and the order is also placed so that's how you create uh, an integration with national database thanks for watching